Welcome back to another building video and well it's time to start implementing these suggestions that I have received and one of the first ones was uh, a person wants to be able to raise or lower his foundation which makes a lot of sense if you have some models that have already their extensions already added to the model it's a very useful feature so let's go ahead and let's implement that so first let's go to our build component and we need to go to our build cycle now I'm going to go ahead and after the if branch check, I'm going to grab all of these nodes right here and I'm going to bring these back because, well, we're going to need to add some more logic over here. So I'm going to bring it even, even further back just in case. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need some kind of an additive that we can add to our vector location. So I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this add location. We're going to go ahead and make this into a vector and this is good. Now, the, the situation now is that we need to figure out if we are actually building a foundation or not, because depending on that, well, only if we are building a foundation, only then we want to be able to raise it or lower it, because we don't want to be able to do the same thing with our walls, because we don't want to have any floating walls. All of our walls should be placed on a solid surface. Okay, so for that, we can grab our trace channel and check if it's equal to our foundation trace and this way it's going to tell us that well we are building a foundation now but before we can do that i actually want to do some adjustments over here otherwise we're going to have to copy and paste the code that i'm about to add twice and i i don't really feel like doing so uh, it's not a lot of code but well we can optimize this a little bit so what i'm going to do is we have our line trace by channel which returns us a boolean value which tells us whether we have hit something or we haven't hit anything so on this condition we're going to do a select and at the bottom there should be a select option and it should look like this now based on whether we have hit or we haven't hit we are using a different vector whether if we have hit we are using an impact point if we haven't then we are using the trace end and that's what we are going to plug in into these wildcards. So if this condition is true, if we have hit something, then we want to use our impact point. Now, if it's false, then we want to use our trace end, just like we did over here. There we go. So that is all good. Now, what I'm going to do is actually disconnect these two locations. So this one and this one, like so. And let's do some more logic. Now... We have checked whether we have hit something. Now we got to make sure that we are building the foundation. So from this one, from this condition, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a select like so. Now, if this is false, if we are not using the foundation trace channel, then we just want to plug this value directly like so. And this way, well, it's going to just simply return us whether the impact point or the trace and based on whether we have hit or haven't hit anything. And then this return value right here can actually go into both of these like so. So now this makes our wiring a little a little nicer. Now, but if we have, uh, if we are using the foundation trace channel, then we want to be able to raise it and lower it. So I'm going to grab my add location and I'm going to do this return value plus vector plus vector plus this add location and plug that into the true route. So now automatically, if we have hit something, it's going to pick one of these two. And if it's a foundation, well, then it's going to add or reduce some value from it and return the end result to over here. So that is all good for this one. Now we're going to have a couple of issues that we're going to sort in a second. First, let's actually try, try to actually run this. Now, for this, we need to go to our third-person character, which has the controls, so we can actually control this value. And uh, in the event graph, I'm just simply going to add a keyboard, keyboard num to key event to lower it. And I'm going to have a keyboard num 8 to raise it. Now, let's grab our build component. Let's get our add location because we're going to need to know the previous one. And then from the build component, we can go ahead and set our add location on both keys pressed. So we're going to have one over here and one over here. Connect the target for the bottom one. And let's do add location plus vector plus vector to raise it on keyboard key eight, like so. And I'm going to raise it by, let's say, five units. 
And at the bottom right here, we want to do the same thing, but instead of vector plus vector, we want to do vector minus vector. Connect the value and type in the value 5 to keep it consistent. Here we go. And that's as simple as it gets for this one. So we can compile and save this and let's test this out. So now if we press B, let's select a different buildable. Let's select our wall on this one. As you can see, I already did some experiments. So let's try to raise it or lower it. As you can see, we can't, but we can do that on our foundation. But unfortunately, well, we can't do it too much because I have this overlap event, which basically blocks it from being allowed to build now. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to lower it and still be able to build it. So let's go ahead and fix that one. Now to fix that one, we need to do some adjustments in our check for overlap because this is the one that forbids us from building now because the build is overlapping some kind of a static object inside of our map. And uh, since we are doing these adjustments, we need to check if it's a foundation or not. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new input to this function and I'm going to call this trace. And this one is our e trace type query this variable right here because that is the exactly the same variable that we are running through our structure so I'm gonna copy these nodes right here so I don't have to recreate those paste those in and just simply connect the trace channel like so there we go so now this function has uh, does know the the trace channel basically so we got that one out of the way now we want to do something very similar we want to grab our trace and check if it's equal to our foundation trace and then we want to go ahead and do a select on this one now let's bring these things back if it's false we want to go ahead and grab our box extension or better yet actually we want to do this divide and then uh, actually let's yeah, let's use our, yeah, our division for this one. So that's going to go into false. And then we can replace our half value with this one. But if it's true, if we are using our foundation, then we want to do some more. What we want to do is actually go ahead and divide this with the vector because we want to divide the Z axis so it would be more uh, flat. So it's not as high when it comes to collision detection. So I'm going to divide this by let's say like 10 so it's like really really small so it's a lot easier so we have more capabilities of lowering this object into the ground and now we should be able to lower this even more so let's give it a shot and as you can see we are able to lower this quite a bit now still we are not able to lower this low enough even if we bring this value even more down and that is because well we are doing the a box trace from the origin point and that's basically the middle of the model so if we want to do it from the top of the model we got to go ahead and basically uh, raise our location a little bit so for that we can do again another one of these based on the foundation trace now if it's false we just use our origin and then we bring both of these in but if it's true then what we want to do is go ahead grab our origin and we want to do a vector plus vector on this one connect this to true and we're going to need to do some quite a few adjustments because we need to grab our box extent we need to break the vector and also we need to break this vector we need to split it because all we want to do is we want to add some more to the z-axis so we're going to reconnect the x and y but for the z-axis because over here all we want to use is actually we want to change the z we want to keep the same x and y so I'm going to also grab the origin and I'm going to go ahead and break this vector and I'm going to reconnect the X and Y. And from the box extent, I'm going to grab the Z and I'm going to do this Z plus float plus float plus this Z value right here. So now with this big mess, 
we should be able to lower this even more. As you can see, we can even lower this super, super low. So I might have messed this up completely already with this code. Uh, but basically that's how I think it should be done. Maybe I might be a little bit wrong on this one. Also, you can always go ahead and just simply do origin and do vector plus vector and just add a couple of units to this one to have le less code. Maybe just add 20 units. If you have all the models in the same size, then just adding some kind of a value will do the trick perfectly, I would say. There we go. So it's this low. And if we bring this to something like 50 now, it should go even lower. Let's give it another test. There we go. As you can see, this thing can now go even lower. Basically to the very, 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 very ground. There we go. So that looks pretty good. It looks exactly the way it should in my mind. Um, I'm going to leave it be. Let the code stay. Seems to be a good code for me. Uh, one last thing that we want to do though is whenever we disable our build mode, I want this add value to basically go back to the default zeros so that it would reset itself. So it's not like that every time we need to raise it and lower it. Uh, if, well, I just want it to be reset. So what I'm going to do is on the launch build mode, whenever we launch it, I'm going to go ahead and set our add location back to the zeros and this basically should do the trick so now if we go ahead and lower this close the build mode reopen you can see it's back to the default value so that's going to be it for this video if you found this useful make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already leave your suggestions for any other features down in the comment section below uh just 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 a quick notice uh so you know that i'm going to be adding this is some of the suggestions I'm going to be adding the allowed and forbidden areas. So you're going to have some uh, blueprint collision actors that are going to basically allow or forbid building in specific locations. I'm going to be adding some furniture. Uh, so we're going to be adding more buildables to this thing. Uh, we're going to have an outline which is going to show us these collision boxes that we have whenever we build something so that it is easier for us to know where we need uh, basically to aim kind of and also i'm going to try to later uh this is going to be one of the, uh, the the last videos because this is going to like change this whole system quite a bit we're going to get rid of the collision boxes completely well i'm going to probably leave, leave them but you're going to have a possibility to just have like a fortnite type of grid in the world so basically it's going to snap to every like let's say 100 or 50 units so it's going to be like auto snapping all the time so it's no longer going to be like this free like it is right now it's automatically going to snap like 50 units tick, 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 tick. so it's going to be something like that yeah if you have any other suggestions uh, yeah leave them down in the comments or message me on discord thank you for watching and i see you in the next one